Okay, so now we're on page 188. And once the ants get out of the garbage disposal, out of the sink, they end up crawling into what? What is that, boys and girls? I'm sure you've seen these in our, in our classroom and in your houses. This is an electrical outlet. And of course, we plug cords into those outlets to get electric current to make our appliances work. Well, this was not so good for the ants because it says that they were stunned senseless and blown out of the holes. When they landed, the tiny insects were too exhausted to go on. Oh dear, boys and girls, these poor ants have just been through so many traumatic things in this kitchen. Um, when I put myself in their place, I just can't imagine how they survived. Um, okay. We'll check there to see if there was anything else I wanted to mention to you guys. I guess that was it. So the strange force, obviously, was the electrical current that actually um, went through their bodies. And at this point, boys and girls, you can look at them and tell one of them has, like, one of their little legs on their head, kind of like we would put our hands on our head if we had a headache or we're feeling really bad. And their antlers are all bent up, and we can tell they have just been through a terrible time. And at this point, boys and girls, the it's nighttime, and their fellow ants that had uh, that they had gone with the night before have come back to get more crystals. But at this point, instead of staying like they did at the beginning of the story, they have decided to slip quietly back to the end of the line. They climb the glassy wall, and once again stood amid the treasure, but this time they each chose a single crystal and followed their friend's hall of home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now we're at the part here at the very end. So we know, boys and girls, that we have reached the resolution or the solution part of the story. Um, I am going to read this very last paragraph. Standing at the edge of their ant hole, the two ants listened to the joyful sounds that came from below. They knew how grateful their mother queen would be when they gave her their crystals. At that moment, the two ants felt happier than they had ever felt before. This was their home. This was their family. This was where they were meant to be. So, boys and girls, hopefully by this time, or by this point in the story, you're really thinking about how the ants have changed throughout the story. At the very beginning, we could describe them as being very selfish or greedy because they wanted to just stay in the sugar bowl and keep the sugar for themselves. And then, after all the terrible things that happened to them, it sounds as if they have finally learned their lesson. Now, what do we call that whenever... A character learns a lesson in the story. You're right. It's theme. And of course, boys and girls, when we're thinking about the theme, we have to think about what lesson did the characters learn in the story? Or how did they change? How did they grow? What is the author trying to teach us? So I want you all to think about that. And I would love for you guys to write that down. I want you to write down what the theme of this story is. Just on another sheet of paper, you can write it in, in your packet on the back of one of um, the other sheets, maybe on the back of the page that has the, um, the story map on it. So boys and girls, you can actually write it just on the back of this page. Write the theme of Two Bad Ants. You can just write it directly on the back of this paper. And that goes right with what we've been learning in class. We've spent a lot of time on theme, and you guys have become experts on theme. So I know you'll do a great job with that. Boys and girls, I did want to point out a couple of things in, um, in the questions. Um, make sure that when you're reading the questions that you pay close attention to vocabulary words that we talk about in class. Like here, what is the genre? Genre is the type of story it is. A genre can be fiction or nonfiction. It can also be... Um, obviously there's many different types of fiction, like we have poems, and of course we had just read about poems before we were out, um, before we got out of school. Um, drama is referring to a play. Um, we know that dramas are written to be acted out on stage. Realistic fiction are stories that 
maybe didn't happen, but they could happen in real life. They're about real people and real things that happen to real people. Like, for example, each kindness, boys and girls, remember Chloe was not nice to Maya. And we know that sometimes kids are not nice to other kids. And that whole story, even though it did not really happen, it could have happened in real life. And then, of course, boys and girls fantasy um, are books that have witches and goblins or, um, you know, kind of similar to fairy tales. Um, there's just a lot of things um, and events that could not happen in real life. And the characters um, a lot of times are monsters or animals. Like in this story, the main characters are the ants. And, of course, we know that ants can't really talk or, um, can, you know, have adventures like the ants do in this story. And then boys, of boys and girls, the point of view is, of course, who was telling the story. First person point of view is a character in the story. So you would see the pronoun I a lot and we and me. And with third person point of view, uh, a narrator, someone outside the story is telling the story. So I do want to go over those because as I was going through these with some of you, um, some of you did well and then some of you got a little confused on those. So I want to make sure that you understood that vocabulary. And then boys and girls, I do want to, um, whenever I check your packets, I'm going to be checking to see, did you write the problem? Did you write at least, you know, three or four of the main things that happened in the story from beginning to end, the important things. Remember, not every little thing, just the important things. And then the solution is how the problem is solved. And boys and girls, um, of course, I know that you can see some of Miss Clyatt's answers. I don't want you just copying mine, um, but you can use it to check your answers if you would like. Um, how might the ending of the story be different if the ant's adventure had been more fun and less scary? Um, boys and girls, the Ants were eager to get home because they had a scary adventure, but if they had had more fun, they may have wanted to stay. Um, how did the ants change from the beginning of the story to the end? Um, I think you all can figure that one out pretty easily after our discussion. And then what caused them to change? So think about what happened to them and why they would want to um, go home after all the things that happened to them. And then, boys and girls, you've got your vocabulary portion here. Um, I know that you're using your remembering your prefixes and suffixes that we've learned this year um, to help you with this part.